Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. Today, we're honored to be sitting down and speaking with Town of Aurora Mayor Tom Rackus. Located just 30 minutes north of Toronto in the heart of York Region, Aurora is a scenic town situated on the rolling hills of the environmentally significant Oak Ridges Moraine. Aurora continues to attract those looking for the ideal combination of small town friendliness with urban amenities. So stay tuned and we'll be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring Aurora Mayor Tom Maracas. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Mayor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by getting to know the man behind the persona, if you will, if you don't mind. And I've got to ask the same question I've asked every single person who's ever come on the show, so you're no exception. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Tom? Well, well, first of all, uh, Chris, thanks for having me. I really appreciate uh, uh, joining and uh, maybe get, giving a little insight to, to me. Uh, well, my duty to serve, well, geez, um, you know what, I uh, I just got really involved in the community when when I moved to Aurora. After I got married, we we decided to, I, I grew up in Scarborough, so, um, and my wife grew up in Forest Hill area, and uh, we got married, and we were looking for a place to live, and uh, uh, we started driving around, we looked at Stouffville, we looked at Uxbridge, uh, we drove through Aurora, in the heart of Aurora, and uh, it just felt like home. And so we moved up here and just immediately right away got involved in the community, volunteering, helping with, uh, you know, whether it was the annual hoedown, um, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, some uh, meal programs, uh, welcoming table, we, we, we were always just helping out. And then uh, my wife decided uh, uh, a year in uh, to be living here, she decided to run for council. And um she got elected in 2006. Uh, uh, she served her term, but felt it wasn't uh, really uh, her cup of tea. And so I uh, decided not to run again. Um, but we both stayed uh, very active uh, with um, uh, with the political scene in Aurora and continued to volunteer. And then when 2014 came along, I just, for me, I really felt that, uh, you know, being so involved in the community, um, I felt that uh, why not step up? Uh, and give back to the community by serving the community and trying to help uh, move the community forward in a positive manner. And so I just felt really strongly in sitting uh, on council and being able to have that voice of the community and uh, make those positive decisions. And so I ran for council. Now, I never I never actually thought I would run end up running from there, but I'd say two years in, yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue. That was probably your next question, but, um, you know, two years in, um, uh, you know, I, I, I really, really started to uh, get passionate about the things that we were doing and the things that we needed to do in our community. And so um, I, I really felt very strongly that uh, I, I, I need to run for mayor. And um, I felt that I could bring, um, you know, a, a different approach, uh, a little bit of an excitement, but also uh, a real, a real good push to getting things done in our community. Um, and so ran for mayor and uh, here we are. So yes, it was going to be my follow-up question. Why did you decide <laughs> to run for mayor? But since you've taken that question out of my uh, repertoire, I'm going to uh, follow up with this. What was it about the allure of municipal politics? Because I looked at your background, I looked at your resume and I looked at where your, where your sort of career trajectory was and it could potentially be a provincial politician or a federal politician but in 2014 you decided municipal was where you wanted to serve because it was the best 
probably to me, the best level of government. For you, what was that decision to go municipally in 2014 based on? Uh, I actually agree with you, Chris. I mean, for me, municipal to me is probably the best level of government. Um, you know what? You're uh, it's hands on. You're you're at the grassroots level. You're dealing with the public directly, and you're making differences in in uh, the day to day lives of the residents in the community. And to me, um, you know, I just I feel very strongly in being able to, being able to make that difference. Um, uh, you know, like provincial, federal both good levels of government uh more to me they're more on the policy side of things and not necessarily directly dealing with the public and so to me uh, i i love getting out there i love i love uh you know uh, meeting all of our residents here in the town of aurora I, i've always said uh, i the way i deal with this position is is i'm everybody's neighbor I, i'm here i'm here to listen i'm here to help uh, where i can um and, and do whatever i can to make our community better and to me that's that's what makes uh, you know, uh, this level so great. And the other fact is, is there's no party politics involved, right? And so you're essentially, you're at this level, you're getting me, right? The residents know this is who I'm getting. This is what uh, the person believes in. And this is what, uh, you know, they see moving forward. And so to me, there's, you know, you don't have to, I guess you'd say in, in some instances, toll the party line, right? And so uh, you're going to do what's always best for your community and your and your residents. With that being said, I want to talk about the role of mayor and the role of council for a few seconds. And I can imagine now after two terms, uh, one as a councillor, one as a mayor, and now re-elected as mayor, and you're almost into your second year as re a re-elected mayor. Um, I can imagine you've come to the realization while you are, Tom, to everyone, Tom isn't well liked by everyone. And I can imagine you've come to the realization that every vote you make you're not pleasing 100% of the people in your community. How do you make the tough choices at the end of the day? Because you are that one vote. They've elected you to make the best decisions for the town of Aurora. And that means you're probably going to have to upset somebody at the end of the day. How do you do that? How do you put your hand up and make that best decision for the entire community, knowing that someone at the end of the day may be upset? Uh, it, it is tough and I, you know, um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I've, I've always said, and this was even back when uh, when my wife was on council, uh, I, I've said this to each of the councillors when, uh, when we meet, uh, we always have to remember that you're going to have people that are going to disagree, you're going to have people that are, that and, and the people that agree with the decisions that you make. But at the end of the day, you have to make decisions based on uh, the information that's available for us and making that decision on what's best for our community and what you believe is best for the community moving forward. Because that way you can justify the decisions that you make and you can sleep at night because, you know, that's, to me, that's an honest uh, way to make a decision. Um, you're, you know, you, to me, that that's it. That's what it's all about. It's about doing what's best for the community. And as long as you, it's, it's such a simple rule actually. And I think as long as you follow that, um, I think the majority of the community will understand that you're always trying to do what's best for the community. And I, and even when I talk to some people and, and they've been upset after a certain vote and I've explained to them why I made the decision that I've made, uh, they might not agree after we have that conversation, but they understand why I made the decision. And uh, I think that they appreciate and respect the fact that I made the decision that I believe was best for the community. Does it get easier? Do the tougher, do, do tough decisions get easier to make or because of the world that we live in right now, with the hard economic times that we're going through, with the rising cost of everything, do the tough decisions get harder? Because now you're potentially impacting day-to-day -day lives of people, or is there uh, an ability for Tom to put things through a lens that even though it's a tough decision, it's a decision that needs to be made at the end of the day? Well, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. There's some, sometimes it's 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 the decision that needs to be made in the best interest of the community. And as I said, some people are going to be upset. And does it does it get any easier? Um, no, because I mean, I think that I think every elected official struggles with, you know, the fact that you know some some of your residents are going to be upset with with the decision that you made. But ultimately, it, it goes back to what I said: is it you have to look at it from the perspective that you have all the information in front of you. Uh, you know, you've talked to the experts, you've talked to, uh, you know, uh, everyone involved, residents, and and you've formulated uh, a thought of, of what is best for the community. And, 
um, you, you have to make those decisions because that's why we're elected. We're elected to make those tough decisions. We're elected to, to you know, continue to make our, our communities grow in a positive manner. And so, you know, uh, while they're tough, you know, you're doing the right thing. 10 years, uh, sorry, in 2010, when I ran for municipal politics back in Clarington, Ontario, I remember going to council meetings prior to that election and seeing about 30 or 40 people in the council chambers gallery, listening, understanding what's going on in their community. Today, flash forward to 2024, you'd be hard pressed to find at least five or six people who would actively take an interest. In the town of Aurora, have you seen a shift to a more apathetic nature when it comes to municipal politics? And how do you as mayor engage with people who seem to be tuning out, and I say this as a broad stroke, not just for the town of Aurora, but across Canada, into municipal issues to get them engaged in what's going on locally at the municipal level? Well, I mean, I mean, you're right. I mean, traditionally, unless the issue is a, is a high profile issue <laughs> or that we're dealing with, um, traditionally the, the chamber's not, not that busy, but I would say mostly w when it is busy, it's busy usually for planning issues. I'm sure you're aware of that. That's usually what brings up. Housing usually is a big topic. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Right. Like that's usually what brings out the most people into the chamber. Um, but I think that also, uh, you know, after obviously after uh, COVID, um, you know, a lot of us switched, you know, we have the hybrid system. We switched. We, you're able to join us virtually now. Uh, uh, we've been actually live streaming our, our council meetings and our committee meetings for quite a long time, even before um, COVID. And so I think that there, there was a shift where a lot of people were like, well, I don't really need to go into the chamber. I can watch it. And, um, I, I don't necessarily have the numbers to be able to provide that today to no, say that, but do you, you know what is, do you get a sense there's an apathetic nature towards it? Because w will you get stopped in the grocery store and people will ask you, mayor what's this issue that's in front of council why are you why is this issue being presented in front of council or are people just to use the old adage as long as my taxes are low my uh, street is cleared when it snows and my water turns on when i want to have a shower in the morning i'm okay with what city hall is doing do you get a sense that people trust that the system is working and i hate to use the word system because i know i'm about to get an email when i say that but do you get a sense that people in aurora put their faith that what is going on at city hall is going to better their community or do you get a sense that people want to engage want to give you their feedback on the issues that are confronting the city or the town uh I, and and maybe this is just aurora but i feel that i feel that the residents of this community want to be engaged uh, and they do engage uh wherever i wherever i go whether it's like a concert in the park or whether it's just going to the grocery store um i, I do get stopped and i do get asked questions I, I i get like you know oh good job on doing that or oh you know mr mayor i didn't agree with you on on that and why did you do that and and i'll, I'll openly sit there and have and have a conversation with them and explain it to them and and i love that about our community they're they're Pretty, pretty engaged, but uh, at the same time, it, it also depends on, as I said, it depends on the issue. But so I, I do, I guess in, in, in one sense, I do agree with, with the fact that, you know, of what you said that, uh, uh, you know, um, I think that for the most part, people are, are okay. Uh, they, they trust who they voted for and they think things are going well. And so um, they're not really going to uh, be that engaged. But at the same time, when there's certain, I think there's certain issues, that's when, and they see it, that's when they get engaged. But I also think that that depends on, on the type of, um, uh, I guess, uh, way of you get your information out there. Like the way I put out on social media, the things that we do and uh, I, I, you know, uh, whether it's a newsletter or whether it's just doing a posting, uh, talking about, uh, you know, well, we did this at council and I, and I kind of give a little write-up of my thoughts, why I voted that way. And so if, if someone picks up on that and they're in, interested in that topic, they'll all of a sudden want to come talk to me about it. And I think that if you do that and you do those types of things, it keeps I think it keeps the community really engaged. And I think a, a more engaged community and more informed community makes us a better community. Engaged community is great. Informed community is better in my opinion. And in my well, I, yeah. <laughs> conversations that I've had, I, I hear from mayors and counselors from across Canada that 
the job of a municipal politician, whether it be mayor, reeve, warden, or counselor, has changed dramatically over the last five years since I'd say COVID-19. That being said, with that being said, I should say, that is because more and more times than not, people are coming to their municipal leaders on issues of jurisdictional purview that are, aren't in the municipal realm. They may come talk to their mayors about education, may talk about healthcare, may talk about, I literally had this conversation yesterday with a mayor from British Columbia, the war in Israel and Gaza, because they are the closest to the people. They see you in the grocery store. Do you get a sense that people are coming to you more often than not about more provincial or federal jurisdictional roles? And how do you tell people that's not your responsibility without saying that to them? Because at the end of the day, they've come to you for a reason, because they're probably more likely to know you than their MPP or their MP. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. There, we, You do get a lot of that. Uh, and, and um, uh, you know, what I would say is I, I I do I do well as I said with all with all interaction I I welcome it I I, I love meeting with with residents having those conversations with them but I, I I think the easy way is I usually just tell them that you know what unfortunately we you know I have no say in the matter I uh, but I can help them I can point them in a direction right like I can either reach out to the uh, MPP or the MP and and kind of help out with that correspondence to kind of you know, get them in front of those uh, elected officials at the different levels. So that way they can actually speak to the people that they need to about the issues that they're concerned about. Um, uh, but it's, but it's tough because, you know, uh, as I said earlier, you, you want to help everyone in the community and it's tough when I, I, I and I've, I've said this to a few people, the, the worst, the hardest part of the job is saying no or not being able to help one of your residents because you just, can't and to me that's the hardest part of the job and so uh we want to i want to help everyone um but sometimes jurisdictionally uh, uh, you know we we don't have the authority to do anything for for an issue and so uh the best that we can do is help them by pointing them in the right direction and helping them maybe start that conversation with those other levels of government because we have that access to them that's a little bit easier than just a regular resident would before I turn to the town of Aurora as a whole, I want to sort of just pivot for a second and ask you, we have people who listen to the show, who watch the show, who are thinking about getting into municipal politics, who want to get involved, but they don't know what the first step is. What advice would you give that potential new candidate who's thinking about putting themselves on the ballot that you wish you would have known back in 2014 when you first put your name on the ballot to better prepare yourself for the role, but also the responsibility that comes with being an elected official at a municipal level? Hmm. Uh, to be honest, with you, I would say start. Um, I mean, other than other than the stuff that you should be doing, which is, and you should have that passion to want to give back and want to serve the community. So, you know, like if you you know get involved in the community, volunteer, get out to events, uh, you know, be around, interact with 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 uh, you know with your fellow uh, community members, and um, and just be you know a real active person within the community. That that should be done no matter what, and you should have that passion to do those types of things before you want to get into into politics, especially at the municipal level. Um, but to be prepared, uh, start watching meetings, uh, go to them live, especially live too, because there's a difference from watching it on uh, like from a, a virtual stream compared to actually sitting there. And I'm I, I'm sure you know this because like sitting there and actually watching how the interactions uh, occur during the meeting it's a different um it's a different uh you know environment and i think that when you're there you start to see uh you know certain things and you also start to learn some of the the procedures you know like you know like uh you know when you speak you know through the chair and all that like like just if you don't know about that that it's good to go there and and hear about that i i know when i when i first got elected i remember as a counselor i i walked into I walked into the office and the first thing I said is, well, I want to do this, 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 and this. And then, and so, well, they say, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this, but you can do this, if you do this and this and this. And you, you know, you, I, it took some time, but I learned um, policy. I learned the legislation and I learned how, how you can actually move things forward and get things done, but you have to do it through that policy. You can't just start, 
you know, uh, you know, going, uh, you know, uh, full speed ahead, there's a way to do it. And uh, you have to learn that. And that takes time. But if you, if I could go back, I would have took some more time to, to sit and really, you know, delve into those uh, policy and legislation. So when you, when you, if you get elected, you can hit the ground running and, um, you know, you can really start to make a difference right away. I'm going to ask a point of question, and I apologize if it comes out of the blue here, but being in office now for 10 years, you probably have seen good counselors come and go. You've probably seen, and I don't want to use the word bad counselors, but those one issue counselors, like I want to fix this pothole and that's the only thing I'm getting elected for. You've probably seen them come and go. In your opinion, what makes a good municipal leader? Well, I, I I think being a good leader is is uh, is understanding and uh, that everyone is going to have a difference of opinion. I think uh, understanding that you don't you don't know everything and uh, you're always uh, uh, willing to listen and learn and um, and being able to work together with people even though you're having a disagreement. And that's I've always said, uh, you know, councils work best when. Um, you respect each other and you're you're able to understand that we're not going to agree on this issue, um, but it's always about where, and I'll go back to what I said, where, where, you know, you're making the decisions based on what you believe is the best for the community. If you're coming from an honest place and you're speaking because this is what you believe in, um, regardless of whether you agree or disagree, you're going to have a, a great functioning council um, because you, you, you have that respect for each other. I think where, where it starts to fall fall apart on some councils, and we've seen it in, in many areas across uh, Ontario, um, where politics comes into it, right? Where there's, um, you know, the politics comes to play, and uh, and 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 uh, you know, people aren't being honest or not uh, really going forward with a decision that's best for the community. It's more of, um, you know, there's, I guess you could say, um, you know, diff uh, difference of. Uh, of of opinions on on um uh, it's the, uh the word i'm looking for is more of uh, uh i'm trying to think of the word i'm looking for here it's uh there uh where you just you know it's it's that it's just that that the politics gets in the way sometimes and i think that's what creates some divisions on on councils and um you know, if you okay, if so you've say, you've opened up a line of questions I need to jump into, and I <laughs> I know we're going to talk about Aurora here in a few seconds, but I need to get this out of the way. Now you were elected by the people of Aurora, but you were not yeah. elected by a hundred percent of the people, and Correct. I can um, I can imagine because I follow you on social media, you seem to engage with everyone, those who agree with you and those who disagree with you. How important is it to listen to that other side? Because you talk about the belief that you have in making that decision, but your belief and what the residents may tell you could disagree with each other. And at the end of the day, you're elected by the people. And we often find ourselves when we vote on things, and I, I can't say this myself, but I've spoken to enough mayors and councillors that I can say this, that your beliefs and what your community wants may not always line up 100% of the time. So do you ever find yourself battling internally with yourself to ensure that, okay, I believe in this passionately, but I'm hearing from 90% of the residents that they want this. So I'm going to have to forego my beliefs because they've elected me and vote for what the people have told me they want. It's that's I, I mean I I'll go we'll go back to that's that's why sometimes they're tough decisions and yeah. you know, it's um I I I personally believe as we said that the people the people like us and I agree with you that yes not not um a hundred percent didn't vote for me I, I did get seventy percent this time around and so you certainly I did that, <laughs> yes I. I I do believe that the, the the majority of the people they elect you because they believe in in the vision that you've kind of created or you've put out there to say this is the direction we need to go. This is what I believe in. Uh, you know, I believe in you know, in development in our community should be appropriate and unique. I believe that you know we need to continue to protect the environment. Uh, you know, add more green space, build our tree canopy. So all the things that you kind of put out there during campaign time, campaign season. Um, people take that and, you know, they vote for you. And so if my decision is based on those values that I've put forward and that they have elected me for, while some of them, uh, you know, maybe during a specific issue, they might disagree. Um, 
I would uh, I would say that I would you know have conversations with them actively to to explain to them that how what the decision that I'm about to make uh, goes with the vision or what I presented to all of you, which you voted for me to do. And so therefore, I that's why I need to make that decision. Understandable. And I appreciate you answering that question. I want to turn to the town of Aurora <laughs> as a whole now, because I'm cautious of time and I didn't realize that segment took a little bit longer than I anticipated. But I want to turn to the town of Aurora. But before I ask the first question, I'm going to preface it as I always do. This is a conversation between the mayor and myself. This is not a motion of council, not a direction of council, not a policy of council. This is the mayor's opinion and his opinion alone. It may line up with what, Minnesota, what the town is talking about. But right now in this conversation, he is acting as one person in this world uh, in this interview mayor in your opinion what do you believe is the biggest challenge or challenges facing the town of aurora today as of recording this interview and i think it's the same as it is right across the province and probably the country is it's housing um it's housing and to me it's it's about how do we how do we provide housing uh you know for our younger generation uh, but also our seniors um that's affordable attainable um, but also, you know, for me, it's it's about how do we do it and continue to have appropriate development uh, uh, that align with our official plans and our zoning requirements, um, because that is part of that vision for our community, that our entire community has has an understanding of that's how we're going to grow. Um, so we need to we need to have a really uh, uh, we need to balance it. Uh, but housing is probably the biggest issue, I think. It doesn't matter which community you move into. Um, that right now, as we speak, is the biggest issue. How is the town of Aurora overcoming that challenge? Because I, th it's the million dollar follow up question. Because uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. we, we, you and I were both at FCM, and we heard yeah. from the outgoing pre uh, president Scott Pierce. I don't want my mayor building houses. I want them building the infrastructure to go to the houses that I want developers to build. How do you, as mayor, as council in the Royal U? ensure that you get the housing built that the residents so desperately need in today's age well i mean in aurora we we as i said we need to from, from my perspective we need to ensure that um we continue to have appropriate development to me uh, i get we all get it we're in a housing crisis but it doesn't mean that you just uh, open up the floodgates and say build what you want we still have rules and i know that some of the rules need to change and that's why councils uh you know right across the uh, I know our province are are making adjustments to their official plans, to their zoning um, that will allow for, you know, uh, whether, uh, you know, whether it's uh, exclusionary zoning and, 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 you know, and getting rid and getting rid of that. Um, but, um, uh, you know, uh, allowing for more, uh, you know, triplexes, uh, duplexes, uh, fourplexes. Um, and we've done we've done a lot from the town of Aurora perspective before the province uh, made it mandatory now for the uh, removal of uh, minimum parking requirements in the MTSA. We are we were already doing that. We were already moving to that. We had a motion. We we already had staff uh, put that forward so we can do that through our new OP update and um, uh, you know looking at looking at uh, providing more of that missing middle. I, I mean the thing that I think that thing that that. The challenges we have in Aurora is that uh, everyone wants to open up the floodgates and they want to allow for, you know, 15, 20 story buildings. And, um, you know, that's not the case. And that's where we go back to what's appropriate development. To me, I, and, and if anyone can, can prove me wrong, just because you build a seven story or you build a 15 story, if anyone thinks that instead of building that 15 story, instead of that seven story and allowing that 15 story, that all of a sudden you're going to have affordable housing. Um, I got a bridge to sell them because <laughs> that's not going to happen. I got also so, property in Alberta that I can sell you too. <laughs> <laughs> but it, so to, yeah, to me, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, you know, for us, the challenge is, is to, is to provide uh, more housing um, but as I think a lot of mayors right across the province have have said and have said to the premier and have, have continuously said through, you know, some of the um, the challenges we're having with the building faster fund being able to be accepted for it, where we need to hit our 80 percent of our target. You know, at the end of the day, we all we can do as a council is approve applications. We can't actually physically put the shovels in the ground. That's up to the development side. 
And so there, there needs to be, um, a, you know, a better way. And I know that Minister Klander has mentioned it, that, you know, that, uh, that he believes there needs to be a bit of a tweak and they're, they're looking at how they can make some adjustments. Um, but, you know, if we don't have the uh, proper funding to build the infrastructure, well, then we can't grow appropriately. And so we need to build that infrastructure because, uh, you know, like here in Aurora, Newmarket, East Willenberry, I mean, we have an issue when it comes to water allocation. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're struggling because we don't, we don't have that much allocation left. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're going to do obviously what we can to, uh, to grow. Um, but there, without, without the, the dollars for infrastructure for that pipe now that's going to go down south, that the province has decided on um, uh, without the, without the funds, um, that pipe is not going to get built, which means that development is going to dry up in East Willenberry, Newmarket, and Aurora, and the northern part of York Region um, will essentially stop building, and and that doesn't help anyone. Uh, we don't want to stop building, um, but also when we build, it needs to be appropriate for our communities. Do you, do you find yourself playing a game of chicken and the egg, which came first? Because developers want to build. They they seem to yeah. want to build. When I talk to developers, they want to build houses, but they want municipalities to step up and build the infrastructure first because they don't want to be on the hook of building that infrastructure or connecting that infrastructure. Do you see yourself, and we'll take it as the town of Aurora and then also York Region, because I know you're part of York Region as well, in trying to address the infrastructure challenges while trying to adhere to those building uh, targets that the province has laid out, and it just isn't sort of meshing because people are tapped out. Municipalities can't run deficits. You cannot run, you cannot spend more than you bring in every year as a municipality. And I'm sorry, but last time I checked, the cost of uh, putting an infrastructure a water lot main line through a municipality is going up every day that we speak and it's not getting cheaper. So do you find yourself sort of in a moment of sort of self-reflection to say, how are we going to do this without putting it on the backs of the people who are currently here. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, I mean, first of all, and I, I, I think it's absolutely inappropriate for any of us to consider putting it on the backs of our residents. Um, like, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's, the, there's no way any of us could ever even conceive of, of doing that um, because I think that that's irresponsible. And I think that we need, we need to, um, you know, we really need to sit down, I think all of us, provincial government, municipal governments, and and the development community and figure out how do we work together on this. I mean, I get it, the development community, you know, they would prefer that the municipality pays for it or the province pays for that infrastructure. But at the same time, they need to put in a little bit too. Um, you know, they need to put in their share because essentially they're they're making a profit uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. We live in a capitalist society and, you know, they're a business and that's that's what they're looking to achieve. But at the same time, our business is about the community. It's about the people. It's making sure that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, we keep taxes as low as possible. Uh, uh, but at the same time, build the infrastructure that we need for our communities and make sure that our community is set up uh, in the best possible way for the future. Do you think you've accomplished so, that as council? Um, I yeah, I personally I think Aurora is in a great place. I mean, from a uh, we're we're financially stable. Where we have, uh, I believe, it's still the eighth lowest uh, uh, taxes in the entire GTHA. Um, we have great services and amenities. We're we're just finishing up and getting ready to open up our our town square. Um, you know, a fifty two point eight million dollar project, the biggest infrastructure investment in our community that's ever been done, and and to help with the revitalization of our downtown. Um, you know, so the things that we're doing is uh, is very positive, and I think uh, really lining our community to be to be even better. 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So I want to flip the script to an original question about challenges because we don't only want to talk about the negative things that come with municipalities. Let's talk about the positive things about municipalities. In your opinion, what's the thing you're proud about when it comes to the town of Aurora? I, I'm, I'm, you know what? I always said that you can have everything 
in, in your community. You can have uh, like like we just talked about the facilities. You can have this. You can have that. You could have. Uh, uh, honestly, it's the people. It's the residents of our community. That you know what we. Uh, there is, and if you talk to anyone from Aurora, they say there's a special feeling living here and being an Auroran. And to me, uh, the community we have, we we gather, we we always uh, we always stand together, and um, we're proud to be Aurorans. And um, you know, to me, it's it's very very special. And I can't think of anywhere. And I've, as you, Chris, I've, I've traveled. I've gone to FCM. We've gone all sorts of different places. And uh, you know, and, and I, I'm sure every mayor would say that their community is the best in the residents. But I've I've never witnessed the type of uh, um, you know togetherness that uh, like we have here. And to me, it's something special, and that's what makes our community so great. So I want to turn to my last segment, and it's my favorite subject, because this summer I'm taking a massive RV trip through all of Canada, from Calgary all the way to Ottawa for the AMO convention in Ottawa this year, and I'm looking forward. So I'm making a stop in Aurora, and I got to know, what are some tourist destinations that you recommend to people if they come through Aurora? All right, well, you have to see the Hillary House right on Young Street. I mean, it's a it's a national historic site. Um, uh, it's it's a, a, a Gothic revival uh, uh, house that is is just absolutely stunning um, and lots of history uh, in it from uh, that you'll see from uh, Dr. Hillary who lived there as well. They, they still have some of the things that are inside the house. Um, from that, I would I would uh, point to. Um, you know, our cenotaph is a, a beautiful way of honoring our veterans. I think we have probably one of the most uh, beautiful cenotaphs, uh, I think, uh, it maybe beyond New York region, but uh, definitely in New York region, it's one of the best ones. And, um, you know, just I think if you're passing through, I think uh, you need to come by and stop and give me a call. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a tour of the town square. Um, that that we're we're developing, uh, it it is an absolute incredible project that I think is going to totally transform our downtown um, and how we move forward with arts and culture in our community, um, you know, and and from a tourism perspective as well in that arts and culture fact that like the uh, it, the library, our old Church Street School, the new building, the square, it's it's it actually is pretty phenomenal because it ties in the past with the future and it, it just kind of brings it all together. And I think it's going to be uh, one of those places that is going to be, um, it's just going to uh, change the, the landscape forever. Um, I mean, you seem like a true community man. You seem like someone who loves the entire community, but this question is a little bit of a Sophie's choice. After a long okay. day of council meetings, after a stressful day of being who you are and being out in the community, is there a spot in the community, only one spot in the community that you can go to, that you can decompress and let it all go away, knowing that tomorrow morning you're going to have to get back up and do it all over again? Um, I, I'd probably... I'd probably say on, on my deck on a, uh, as long as it's warm, and it's not raining. I uh, just like to go out in the back and um, I know, I know someone will probably say I shouldn't say this, but I like to just uh, have a nice cigar and uh, relax. And I think, I think everybody knows I smoke. I, I like to smoke a cigar every once in a while. So uh, you know what? Um, yeah. It's just a, it's a nice way to just kind of relax and, you know, and take a breather. Um, but I'll be honest with you, Chris, I, I'm, uh, if you ask anyone, if you ask uh, my uh, my EA Betty or my wife Allison, if you ask anyone, uh, to me it's twenty four seven. I'm. It doesn't matter where I am. I could be on vacation. I'm. I'm answering emails. I'm answering phone calls. Um, I. I. I just think it's when you're doing this job. That's that's the way it should be done. But that's my perspective, and I've always done it that way. And uh, I always tell everyone I'm here twenty four seven. Uh, residents all have my my number, uh, my my cell phone number. They can text me anytime. They can call me anytime. Um, and unless I'm in a meeting, I'm going to pick it up. The last question for you is the million dollar one, and it's an, the important one for myself because I think every mayor councilor knows how to answer it. It's just always good to hear it and put it on the record. But in your opinion, what makes the town of Aurora such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? Well, I, I mean, I'm I'm going to th throw back about uh, about the people in our community. Uh, that 
that's what makes it such a unique place. I, I, I honestly, and when we, when I talk about housing, and when we uh, talk about our, our targets and all that, and anyone that ever asks me a question, they say, well, you know, you're, you're limiting by, you know, height restrictions or this and that in the community. And uh, uh, I always say to everyone, I, 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 w I wish everyone could experience and live here in the town of Aurora and experience what makes our community so great. Uh, uh, experience being with, with fellow Aurorans, experience going to concerts in the park, experience uh, the arts and culture uh, scene, experience uh, uh, the heritage in our community. Um, uh, you know, I know other communities have, have heritage components to it, but you know, like for us, I think it's everything all wrapped into one uh, that makes our community so special and a great place to work, uh, work, live and play. Tom, Mayor, I want to thank you so much for doing this. This has been an honest to goodness pleasure to sit down with you and talk about yourself and talk about the town of Aurora. I always get invigorated by speaking to people who have a passion for municipal politics and are doing it for the right reason. So I truly appreciate you taking time and sitting down and talking uh, on the show about the great town of Aurora. And I'm looking forward to seeing it up close and personal this summer. Absolutely. And when you get here, make sure you you reach out to me. <laughs> and, uh, I'll, I'll definitely take you for a tour. And thank you for having me. I think it was great. And uh, I'm sure as you can tell, and I hope everyone gets a sense of this. Uh, I, I love Aurora. I love talking about Aurora. Uh, and uh, I, I love promoting Aurora. So I look forward to seeing you and anyone else that wants to come by and uh, take a tour. Thanks so much for tuning in for another great episode of the Cross Border Interviews. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our great conversations that we have coming up for the rest of July and then beginning in September with our Season 7 return. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website or if you're watching this on YouTube, in the show notes below. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, but as always, just keep talking.